Right, so what do I have in my camera bag? Okay, uh, first off, we'll go in the top pocket here. Now, this is very disorganized, uh, and the gear that I have in here now isn't necessarily what I carry with me all the time. It really depends on, on where I'm going. Like, if I'm just going out the back door for an hour or so, then I'm not going to take all this stuff. If it's a day trip, then I might carry some extra things, uh, like a lunch. I might have, you know, extra jackets and, and so on and so forth. So I'll just go through every little piece and um, I'll try and give you an idea of when I might use it and when I wouldn't use it and so on. Um, okay, the first item <laughs> is uh, <laughs> when I want to go and have a, uh, a swim in a lake and I don't want to get my hair wet, I carry this with me. Uh, no, actually, this uh, shower cap works great if you want to keep your camera dry when it's really chucking it down. They come in all different styles, colors, uh, and they're cheap. You don't have to go out and purchase uh, a Gore-Tex uh, uh, camera cover for, I don't know how much they charge for them. Unless, of course, you know, if you're using a really long lens, like a 600 or a 500, then, you know, this is obviously, you might have trouble fitting this over it. Uh, it works great, and it's, you know, a couple of bucks. Uh, what else do I have in here? Something that I carry with me all the time, or try to, is uh, a lightweight jacket. This is a lightweight wind jacket from Patagonia. Uh, I actually use this for running. I have a couple of different versions of this, but I try to keep one in my bag all the time, just, just in case. They're not waterproof, but it is water repellent, and it just gives you the extra layer if you feel a bit of a chill or, or whatever, and it doesn't take up much room. So that's really handy. It was almost like Christmas, isn't it? Okay, now this isn't the headlamp that I usually use. I just threw this one in here. I have a bit of a fetish <laughs> with uh, headlamps. I, uh, I, I kind of collect them. Uh, this is an older Petzl one. My current one is uh, a little bit bigger than this, a bit more powerful. I can't even remember the name. I'll put a link down below to, I think it's called the Nano. It's a bit beefier. Uh, you can recharge the batteries, uh, but if you're, concerned about weight then something like this will work great and of course everything's LED now so the batteries last uh, quite a bit longer which is really great and they're quite a bit brighter than the old uh, headlamps. Uh, the only issue that I have with Petzl and I don't know why this always happens uh, it could be because I have a very large head is that the elastic always seems to go on these things uh, it just for whatever reason it deteriorates maybe it has the same disease as my straps on my pack <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, look at this thing. It's, uh, I mean, I have a big head, but uh, I don't have a head, um, uh, well, that big. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Anyway, that seems to happen to all my headlamps. What else? Okay, uh, for carrying cards, I just have this little wallet. It's handy because it has a little leash on it so you can attach it so you, you don't lose it. Uh, little bag here. I carry all of my batteries. That's the only issue I have with digital cameras and all the gadgets that go with them is the, just the batteries. You can never have enough batteries. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about batteries a little bit down the road here, but I usually have three or four of each type of battery for each camera or whatever gadget I'm using, because it's a real pain if you run out of batteries in the middle of nowhere. An item that I don't carry all the time, sometimes, I'll, use, I'll bring this with me if I'm doing a bit of winter photography. Uh, this is actually uh, an emergency uh, bivy sack. It packs down quite small. You never know if you get stuck out in the middle of nowhere and you're, you're you know, it's cold and you're, and you're wet and so on. It's just a handy thing to have. Uh, like I said, if I'm just going out for a day trip or somewhere like this, then I'm probably not gonna bring a bivy bag with me <laughs> since my car's a couple of hundred meters down the road. Okay, what else do we have in here? Okay, a little low pro uh, clamshell um, camera bag. And this is my main vlogging camera. This is the Sony RX Mark III. Overall, it's an amazing camera. Uh, the features on this are just incredible. It's, uh, it's like a mini DSLR. It has every feature that you could want on it and more. I, I really enjoy this camera. Uh, the only issue that I have with it, and you've probably noticed this in a lot of my videos, is the auto-focusing. Now, 
I guess I could use manual focus because um, it does have focus peaking on it, but generally I, I just keep it on auto focus and sometimes it has real problems picking up my face. So the background will be sharp, but my face won't be. The other issue again with focusing is, and this is something that I've noticed with a lot of my videos, is that the autofocus will be continually going in and out. And if you look at the corners of the video, it, it's always searching. It seems to be searching all the time. And that's a little bit annoying. Also, if I'm using the audio on this, which I do quite often, uh, rather than an external mic and, and gadget, uh, you can hear the uh, autofocus focusing in and out and for a while there there was this really annoying clicking sound and I couldn't figure out what it was and then I realized that it was actually when I was holding the the, um, the camera like this and if it was windy there was a, a little uh, wrist strap on it clicking against the camera and, and that's what the noise was so I got rid of that. I have these little fuzzy things on the microphone which kind of help a little bit but overall it's it's an amazing camera uh, eventually I, I would like to upgrade, but for now I just, you know, I, I, I just can't see the point in uh, the, the added expense. These cameras are quite expensive, especially the new one, which is the Mark V. I think it's around $1,200 Canadian or $9.99 US, which is quite a lot of money for a, a little point and shoot, but it's just packed full of stuff and it's, it's an excellent camera. I can't say too many good things about it, except for the focusing. All right. Uh, what else? Ah, this is probably the most important thing that I have in my pack. And that is what's in this little bag here. Uh, yes, you guessed it, uh, toilet paper. Uh, you can never have enough toilet paper. <laughs> um, leaves and sticks just don't work too well. Now, while I'm on the subject of uh, pooping, I just want to uh, point out that uh, I've, I've noticed a, a really disturbing trend lately, and this could be just um, for tourists in the, in the front country, but a lot of the, the lakes that I visited by the road in the Rockies this year, um, there was toilet paper everywhere. I get it. I mean, if you have to go, you have to go. But um, please, if you're going to use toilet paper, please get rid of your paper, either burn it, uh, as long as there aren't fire restrictions, uh, bury it somewhere, or even better, take it out with you. But yeah, uh, leaving paper everywhere is, is just not cool. You know, even some of the hikes I did this year, I couldn't believe it. Some people actually would take a big dump right in the middle of the trail. I mean, come on, really? Uh, you know, if you're gonna take a dumper, just go off the trail, dig a hole somewhere, do your business and then cover it up, okay? And preferably not close to a water source. <laughs> it's pretty disgusting when people are shitting in the woods everywhere. So toilet paper is very handy. <laughs> right, time to get into the meat of the, uh, the pack. So we're just gonna open up the back here. <clears throat> Okay, now, first of all, um, in the lid here, I have a few filters. Now I showed these in, in my last video, so I won't go over them in great detail. This is pretty much all of the 77 millimeter filters that I have. I think there's four, uh, four, three or four here. If I'm going on a backpacking trip, then I'll usually just take a polarizer. Uh, maybe an N, uh, a 10 stop ND filter, but that's about it. Sometimes I don't even take a filter at all, uh, just to cut down on weight. Um, these are the step down rings. I'm not really sure why I have two in here because I only really need one and that's for the 70 to 200. So you fit these, you know, one of these lens onto here and then just screw it onto the, uh, the front of the 70 to 200. It's nice to have filters, uh, one set of filters that'll fit all lenses. So if you're looking to buy filters, uh, buy a set of filters that will fit your largest diameter lens and then just buy step down rings to go on those other lenses. Uh, the only problem with that method is that um, if you use lens hood, uh, you won't be able to put your lens hood on. But anyway, uh, that's what I use mostly for backpacking, the screw on filters. Uh, these are extra propellers for uh, the drone, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So those just kind of fit nicely into the top pocket there. Now we have a lens pen uh, for cleaning the front of your lenses. 
Uh, now this filter here, I haven't tried this out yet. This is a new filter from a, a company called KNF Concept. And they sent me this and a tripod that I'll talk about in a little bit. I haven't tried this out. I, I'm really happy with the breakthrough photography filters. Uh, but this is a, a variable ND filter. I've never tried one before. So I said, yeah, sure, send, send one my way. I'll try it out and um, I'll do a little review on it. If, if I like it, I'll tell everybody. If I don't like it, then I'll tell everybody as well. <laughs> uh, I'll give it a go, but not today. <laughs> okay, so we open up. Now, my main camera body at the present moment is the, the Nikon D850. Most of you have heard of the new Nikon or Nikon. It is a really uh, great camera. The camera that I had before uh, was this guy here, and this is the, the D800. And to be honest with you, I, I'm really happy with the D800. I couldn't see the point in upgrading to the 810 because they came out so close to one another that I couldn't justify the cost. And it, I mean, really, this camera, uh, I, I still use it now. It's, it's a great camera. I, I, I don't have any issues with it. What I do like about the new D850 is the, uh, the touch screen uh, on the back. And I do like the higher dynamic range. That is definitely a plus. The, the new larger sensor, um, I, I've blown up images from this camera to uh, four by six feet and they're just amazing. So to really notice a difference, I mean, you're talking, you know, billboard size. The main feature I like about the, the D850 is the articulating screen on the back. Uh, the only negative thing that I, can, that I can find right now about the D850 over this is the battery usage. Uh, now the, the new 850 does take different batteries to this. They're, they're slightly more powerful and supposedly last a bit longer. But as I said in my Tonquin video, which I'll post up here, if you're using the touchscreen on the back, it really eats up the juice of your batteries which is fine if you're working close to the car or you're just going out for the day. But again, if I'm going out on a trip for several days, uh, I really don't want to have to carry a whole slew of batteries. So I haven't quite figured that one out. Probably if I just didn't use the, the, um, the touch screen and, and just use it like a regular camera, it probably won't eat through the batteries quite as quickly. Uh, and that was the only reason why I never went with the mirrorless cameras is currently I mean, the mirrorless cameras are great, but um, they, they just eat through batteries. And if you're going away for a week or two in the middle of nowhere, then, you know, I don't really want to have to carry dozens of batteries. So that was a little bit of an issue for me. Uh, but then, you know, then we have the weight of these. I mean, a DSLRs are, are, are pretty darn heavy. So I don't know. There's always negatives and pluses to each uh, system that you use. But anyway, I'm really happy with these cameras. This one has uh, a Kirk Enterprises L bracket. And for the new camera, uh, the, the D850, I was gonna buy an L bracket um, from either Really Right Stuff or Kirk. And both companies make amazing stuff. Uh, but again, the issue is price. Once I figured out the, the duties, uh, taxes, shipping, for an L bracket from Really Right Stuff, it would have cost me $240 or something like that, which is just crazy. Uh, you know, as great as they are, I just cannot justify spending that kind of money on an L bracket. So I ended up buying one from uh, Amazon for, you know, 20 bucks. Yeah, it's not as well made, but it works. Like my attitude might change if it suddenly breaks while I have it on a tripod. But <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about lenses. Okay, this lens here is the Nikon 14 to 24. Amazing lens, super sharp, great for astrophotography. The big issue I have with it is uh, weight. <laughs> it's, it's a heavy lens. It's, there's a lot of glass in there, it's a beast. And um, for backpacking, you know, if I'm carrying this along with this lens, I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight. Okay, so what am I using as an alternative? Okay, well, this is the um, 16 to 35 F4. Now, the reason why I bought this is it's quite a bit lighter than 14 to 24. Now, granted, it, it only goes to 16, not 14, but it's, it's again, it's, it's the weight issue. This 
takes the 77 millimeter um, filters that I was showing you earlier. Whereas if I want to use filters on the 14 to 24, I have to use a whole different filter system, which is quite a bit larger, bulkier, and so on and so forth. So that's my backpacking lens. But what I'm finding is I'm using this more and more uh, over the, the 14 to 24. I'm not sure why. 16 to 35. 14 to 24. Okay, now I have a um, third party intervalometer or a shutter release. You have to decide whether you want to spend, you know, hundreds of bucks on a, a brand one or just go for the off brand one. I think I, I paid like $20 for this, which is just crazy cheap. If it breaks, it's, it's not a huge deal. I had a, when I was using Canon cameras, I had a Canon intervalometer that cost me over $200 in it and I broke it within the first year. I think I ran over it with a car. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll do it. Okay, the next lens is the um, 70 to 200 f4. Again, this is an excellent lens and I haven't had this very long. It, it does have a smaller diameter, so that's what the, the step down rings are for for the, uh, for, for the filters. The reason why I got the F4 again is because most of my subjects that, that I like to shoot uh, are, are, are not moving. So I don't need the extra stop of light, like a 2.8. The weight is more of a concern for me. Uh, it's an excellent lens, uh, nice and sharp. And this is about all the reach I really need for most landscape work. Uh, now, if I'm shooting wildlife or anything like that, or if I need extra reach, then I do have a longer lens and I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit. But um, if I'm going out on day trips, I'll carry this. If I'm backpacking, then I usually leave this at home. Okay, I had to change lenses there. Now, this is probably my most used lens, uh, and it's probably the least sharp out of all of them. Uh, this is the 24 to 120 f4, and you can see it's quite a small lens. It's an excellent focal length. Uh, I, I do wish it was a little bit wider, uh, like say, I don't know, 22 or, or 20 to 120 would be an amazing lens. But generally, if I'm going backpacking, I'll, I'll take this with me and the um, 16 to 35, and then that's it. Again, this uses 77 millimeter uh, filters, but it's, it's been an excellent lens. Uh, this is the lens I think that they usually include in the, in the kit. Uh, so if you buy a, a body and a lens, um, this is one of the lenses that they offer, I, I believe. I bought this separately, but yeah, I, I really like it. It's, it's been a, a, a really great lens.